Uh, good morning. So I'm back. Now we can start uh, the class. Sorry for the inconvenience. I was having a problem with the... There was an autom automatic uh, update initiated on my computer, which has really given me a lot of credit. Uh, but now that we are here, we can continue. Um, We open the notes so that we can. So this is topic five. So in the previous topic, we learned about data processing. We also went further and discussed the various modes of data processing. Uh, this topic introduces you to the process of data communication, which entails the transfer of data from one point to another. We also look in, de uh, in depth. Uh, uh, at the network uh, networks, there are computers in this network as well as types of networks. So the topics have has five sections, namely introduction to data, communication elements, introduction to networks, types of networks, and the network topologies. So by the end of this, a lecturer should be able to define a computer network. Uh, by the end of this course, uh, Alana should be able to define co the computer network, discuss the various transmission media, discuss the devices, topologies for various places. I'm going to add notes online on these, then I'll put these activities where you will be able to define what, what data communication is. But I can still post the same question uh, in your own one in your own understanding. Um, I'm putting in the, the message box in the chat so that you can can you kindly discuss define can you define data communication in your own words in your chat box kindly. In your MS, I post two questions. I'm posting two questions. And what is a computer network? So, can, can you kindly do that activity very fast? Define what a define the two, define communication, and then define computer networks. Then, I'm also putting in what do you understand by so these are the things I want to see how you respond. And what do you understand by the term data communications? Define the three very fast. And you say what you are now you say transfer of data from one point. What does it refer to? 
data communication. Yeah, I can see, guys. Uh, keep updating so that we, we move. Yes, I can see. Mm. Data communication, I can see the way. Keep responding so that I can see if you're getting this concept. Keep responding. I can see some will see me saying data communication is the exchange of information between one person to another. Keep responding. Good, now we can proceed. At least uh, I can see you have, uh, you, have, you have really answered the questions. 
So you will take notice that in order to respond to any of the above questions, uh, you have to know what communication is. However, there is a lot of material on data communication and this tends to confuse learners. However, this topic is designed to help you understand what data communication is by covering areas of computer networks and network topologies. Hope you will enjoy. Now let's start. So computer uh, introduction to data communication. Uh, computers also communicate to one another. Computers that are in common computation are said to be a network and they share data. And that is what is referred to as data communication. To introduce ourselves to the, this new area, we say this is the transfer of data from one point to another using electronic means. In any communication process, we have the source, encoder, transmitter, transmission media, uh, receiver, decoder, destination. The source of data can be sensor or human being. This data has to be coded in, into form that uh, other parts of the system may understand. The data must be transferred into a form that can be transmitted. This is work of the encoder. Then the transmitters receive this code message and transmit over the media. So since data, since data in a computer has to be transmitted or transported, it's important to note over what media it's transported. We just discuss the various media below. So a digital signal cannot, uh, so transmission media, a digital signal cannot be sent from one place to another without a media communication. A transmission media is a part used for carrying data and information from one point to another. This communication media will, in most cases, dictate the type of signal to be used to transmit a message. In essence, data communication, data communication media can be divided into two. This can be classified into guided and unguided media. With guided media, data transmission is constrained with a transmission channel, e.g. a pair of copper wire. In unguided media, the data is transmitted over space and may be omnidirectional. Next, we can now look at these two types of media. So we have guided and, uh, and guided media. So guided, um, the main uh, distinguishing character, characteristic is that in the guided or uh, bounded media data signals are transmitted from the source to the destination through a restricted pathway, such as through a cable. In guided media, the electronic wave signal is constrained in what is known as physical media. There are several types of guided uh, media, but the most common are uh, the two wire open lines cable, the twisted pair cable, the coaxial cable, and uh, the fiber optic cable. So, so we look at now, let us discuss each of them. So twisted pair cable, uh, a twisted pair cable is made up of two solid copper wires strands wound around each other in a double helix manner. So a cable, a pair of wires are used to transmit information from point, from point to another. Uh, several pairs can be grouped together like, uh, uh, like to form a multi-core cable. So the twisting helps in overcome, overcoming Cross talk, or in simple terms, it helps reduce the development of an electromagnetic field around the wires as they transmit data. It has the advantage of flexibility and cheap, and then, however, it easily suffers from cross talk, especially when cables in parallel, uh, cable in parallel for some length. So, starting and stopping uh, electrical motors will affect the cables. However, shielding has been used in critical areas. So um, at your own time, read and make notes on the, on the two common types of twisted pair cables. So there are two types. And also what are the advantages and disadvantages of twisted pair? I'll be posting this in the, 
in the forum i've not done that but i'll be posting the notes and the, in the lms in the forum so that you can answer those questions the actual cable the second type of guided media is the coaxial cable a coaxial cable resembles a cable that is used to connect a television antenna to a television set this cable has a central copper core which may be of solid stranded wires surrounded by an insulator the dielectric material is then surrounded by a hole mesh uh, which is covered by a shield uh, making the, the cable more resistant to electromagnetic interference than the twisted pair cable so a high frequency uh, at high frequencies current flows is concentrated on the skin of a cable this means that uh, remove the material of a, a wire may not affect transmission in coaxial cable we have an inner, inner conducted so you can see now this is what in the diagram you can see uh, what we have there the, the way it's protected until the core where the where you can see the diagram of a coaxial cable so surrounded by an outer conductor uh, separated by spaces the outer conductor acts as a shield from electromagnetic interference as the as return path so this cable has a superior noise characteristics but special terminators and is flexible so you can see that uh, that figure depicts uh, what a coaxial cable is so in the discussion forum i'll put you to I'll put it so that you can discuss the advantages and disadvantages of coaxial cables i think when you go to the discussion forums i think by the end of the day you will be able to discuss uh the not to be online our lms was a bit down but uh, i wanted to post this morning but i'll post within the day you can access the notes so the the fiber optic cable uh, this one is among the best and uh, next we discuss the fiber optic this is one of the latest types of bounded media to be developed instead of carrying data signals or transmitting electronic signals the fiber optic cables utilizes light to transmit data from one point to another on the network the cable consists of thin glass plastic fiber surrounded by cladding that offers environmental protection the data is injected via photo photo one a lesser diode into the into the cable as the light pulses that undergoes total thermal refraction and received uh, on the other side by a photo diode it has the the advantage of Im immunity from electromagnetic interference and high has has high capacity uh, but it's very expensive to implement so you can know that it, it's very expensive so but it's one of the fastest media it's what is making internet so in kenya we have uh, the ones coming from america through seacom and other companies i brought data cables from they have run into the indian ocean came to mombasa it's the point i think another point is in south africa and it comes all the way and even at kibabi here we have uh, fiber optic just passing outside the gate and mostly in the counties they have really passed this fiber everywhere and it's the fastest media because it transmits data at the speed of light uh, i think 5g will really require this then we have unguided after discussing and uh, having a, a lengthy dis, uh, discussing at length about guided media let us now shift and focus on unguided media or wireless media wireless or unguided media is a type of media that is used to transmit data from one point to another without using physical connection in this case uh, transmitting antenna and receiver uh, aerial facilitate this this makes uh, use of uh, radio waves that are transmitted over antenna and transmitted over space this can either be via ground wave sky wave or space wave transmission so satellite transmission is a form of uh, space transmission a radio wave as a form of electromagnetic wave that can that is radiated sorry a radio wave is a form of that can that is radiated out of uh, antenna so generally if an antenna is uh, excited by an alternating signal the magnetic field will be changing direction at 180 degrees so for a magnetic wave to change direction it has to collapse back in the antenna and uh, 
require some time to do this at about 15 uh, kilohertz the periodic time of of uh, wave become equal to the time for the magnetic field to collapse into the antenna any reduction in periodic time will mean that the magnetic field will not have collapsed before the wave changes so the they will result in the collapsing field being repelled into a space a changing magnetic field generates a changing electric field which in turn generates a changing magnetic field these self generating fields referred to as the electromagnetic waves moves through space at the speed of light so it moves at the speed of light so a characteristic of any transmission media is the data transfer rate this is referred to as the number of bits transferred per second the higher the, rate, the data rate the higher the bandwidth examples of wireless transmission include microwaves satellite uh, radio waves and infrared transmission so we will now we, we will discuss discuss the advantages and disadvantages of wireless uh, transmission. that one will put it as a discussion so that you can be able to discuss so after understanding the transmission media uh, we will put them in the forums so you you know that you are going to discuss this in the forums and get to understand then after understanding the transmission media, let us now shift our focus onto the data communication. So the basic elements of our, of our communication system, the following are some of the basic requirements for working of our communication system, the sender. Uh, we have the sender of the source, who place the message to be transmitted, then a media that carries the message, then the receiver who receives the message. Receiver. This receives the data from the transmission media and passes it over to the decoder. Then decoder changes the received uh, changes the received signal to, uh, to form uh, to form it was before encoding before applying it to the destination. Then encoder this encodes the signal before transmission. Then transmitter this transmits the encoded uh, signal to the appropriate media. So the basic uh, communication uh, system is normally used in a network. Uh, so I think again, we have already defined what a data, uh, what a network is, but now let us just do it. I think I said you define oh, what a network is. So let's go what's a network. A network is an interconnection of computers. This interconnection leads to several classification of computer networks. Let us start with the familiar ourselves with some important terms that are normally used in networking. So we have uh, important terms. So we have the intranet. The newest type of uh, network to be used within an organization is an in internet or the internet web. Uh, so we are, we are looking at the internet. Uh, the newest type of, uh, let me just recap that. Uh, the newest type of network to be used within an organization is an internet or internet web. Such networks enable computers of any type or to communicate easily. The hardware and the software needs the same as the internet, uh, specifically the TCP IP uh, server and the browser's uh, software used for the World Wide Web. So because most organizations have a, a need for more dynamic ways to link people and information, the internet market is expanding day by day. Moreover, there is no need to adjust the network when a new user joins in. With the help of the internet, all computers of the organization can work as standalone systems connected to a mainframe or, or a LAN or one. Like right now, we are using the internet to be able to learn. We have the electronic mail, stands for email. This is one of the mostly widely used uh, uh, features. Internet uh, mails are regularly used uh, today, uh, where with, without the help of a postage stamp, we can transfer mails anywhere in the world with the electronic mail the service is similar but here data is transmitted through internet and therefore within minutes the message reaches the destination so we have the voice messaging uh, it is a communication approach which is uh, similar to electronic mail except that it is uh, it is audio message rather than text messages that are processed. A sender speaks into a telephone rather than typing, giving the name of the recipient and the message. 
that uh, sender's voice is, uh, signal is then digitized and stored. The system can then either deliver the message at a specified time in the future, or it can retrieve from a database by the recipient. The message is uh, converted back into analog format when it is delivered or, or retrieved so that uh, the recipient hears it as the original sender's voice on telephone. Voice messaging requires a computer with an ability to store the audio messages in digital form and then convert them back in an audio form upon verification. Each user has a voice mail box in a secondary storage and a special equipment converts the convert. So the audio message to and from the digital form the main advantages of voicemail over electronic mail is that the sender does not have to type. Voicemail also makes it easy to include people in the firm's environment in a, in a communication network. Then we have the e-commerce, electronic e-commerce, as it's popularly known, refers to the paperless. Electronic commerce uh, refers to the paperless exchange of business information using electronic data uh, data interchange, uh, electronic mail, then you have the electronic bulletin boards, electronic fund transfer, and other network-based technologies. Electronic commerce not only automates manual processes and paper, paper transaction, but it also helps uh, organizations to move into a full, uh, fully electronic environment and changes the way they usually operate. So few organizations have recently started conducting the electronic commerce over internet and the networks. So internet has also helped electronic commerce to boost up because it is a low-cost alternative to the proprietary networks. The electronic commerce standards are, however, under develop, under development. So electronic uh, data exchange is still uh, the dominant part of the electronic commerce. So information technology has transferred the way people work. Electronic commerce has an added, uh, an added yet another revolution, which is changing the way business houses buy and sell products and services. So electronic commerce is associated with buying and selling of products and services over communication network. So electronic commerce transfers information electronically from computer to computer into in, in autonomous ways. So electronic commerce has in fact transferred the way organizations operate. So electronic commerce, uh, right now you can buy and sell things, OLX is there. There are so many ways, Najumia, we have Kilimanimu, Mall that you can also get, Kili Mall, that you can also get your, these days you don't need to go and inspect the product, you can still, I know most of you have bought things online, just from Facebook you send and they send you. You have electronic data interchange, electronic data interchange is the, the computer to computer exchange of uh, business documents uh, in a standard format, so the format uh, looks much like a standard form and are highly structured. And then we have teleconferencing. This is what we are doing right now. So it refers to the electronic uh, meetings that uh, involve people who are at the physical different sites. Like right now, you are at the physical different sites. Charlton, you have started again this nonsense of writing on the name. Charlton, I warn you. You have started again writing on this wall. Charlton is the same, same guy. Stop. Let it be a warning. Charlton, I want you to stop writing on the... You are, you are giving us hell again. So, we're talking about teleconference. I'll just recap this, that uh, it refers to the electronic meetings that involve people who are at, uh, physically different sites. Like right now, you are in different sites, but we are able to meet. There are those who are like four in one. There are those who are in two, uh, two of them. I can see some like the boy who are full of TV. You are like two of you on the screen, You're just following me slowly on how I'm teaching. So I can see you guys. And uh, that's what we call teleconferencing. So 
at least you you have been this course has been carried out using electronic uh, mail so it has not been an issue so after knowing the, the common terms of networking let us uh, now talk about the types of network available so we have the types of networks so computer networks can be classified using several aspects but the most common classification is using size so currently there are several types of uh, such networks but the most common are lan local area network and uh, is the interconnection of computers with the uh, uh, with a small area such as the university campus it has a higher data transfer rate and less error it's usually owned by an organization like what we have in kibabi is a local area network where you can access your internet then we have the man the metropolitan area network this is the interconnection of computers with a, within a metropolitan area. Then we have the wide area network, an interconnection of computers globally. So the, the, this, uh, uh, the speed alone, and it has a higher error rate. The wide, that's what we call the wide area network. Um, and then explain the three common types of computer networks and in use today so if you're given that you will know what to do then after talking about uh, the types of networks it's good to focus our discussion on a new era in networking called network topologies so the term uh, network topology refers to the way in which computers and other devices have been uh, arranged or how data is passed from one computer to another, to another in a network so a network topology can be viewed in in two ways physical or logical. The physical topology is the actual layout of a network and its interconnections. So logical topology is the way in which data accesses uh, the media and transmit packets. There are several network topologies and we discuss each of them uh, in the following sections. First, we discuss the bus topology. In this topology, the computers are at, attached uh, to a bus shown in the in diagram figure below. So the bus must be terminated at, at end to uh, avoid reflections. The advantages are that it is easier to a computer. Uh, it is easier for a computer to network to a system. Uh, so, as, so the advantages are that it is easier for a computer to network to a system, then a failure of any one computer does not bring the system down. However, a failure of cable, uh, cable causes the whole system to fail. It also requires a complex communication protocol. Any computer can send data of the bus, but must include the destination address and at no time should, should to computers transmit at the same time. So then carrier sends multiple access with collision detection is the protocol used. So you can see there is a bus here and we have these lines, you can see the diagram, then we have the terminator of the, of the, of the communication. So they transmit in a bus. What are the advantages of a bus network? Inexpensive to install, easy to add in station, use scale, lose, Use less cable compared to to other topologies. Then work works well for a small network. And then disadvantage: no longer recommended due to frequent collision of packets. If backbone breaks, whole network down. Limited number of devices can be attached. Difficult to isolate problems. So we have the ring topology, uh, similar to a bus uh, network. Is the ring. In this topology, rings have not uh, base chain, but the end of the network in a ring comes back around to the first node, creating a complete circuit. Each node takes a turn sending and receiving information through the use of a token. The token, along with any data, is sent from the first node to the second node, which exact uh, the data address to to it and adds any data it wishes to send so then uh, uh, second is the token 
and the data to the uh, to the third node etc until it comes back around to the first node again only the node with the, the token is allowed to send data all other nodes must wait for the token to come to them so you can see it's there so uh, you can see it's in a circle and all these are so data packets travel at uh, great speeds no collision uh, easier to fault fine no terminators required disadvantage require more people than a bus uh, a break ring will bring it down so if you break any of the rings then then, then that ring not as common as the bus then we have the star topology um, and what our discussion is the star in a star network each node is connected to a central device called a hub. The hub takes, uh, takes a signal that comes from any node and passes it along to uh, all the other nodes in the network. A hub does not perform any type of filtering or routing of the data. A hub is a junction that joins all different nodes together. So you can see a hub, but all computers are joining at the center. All of them are joining and there's a master. It will be a server or a computer hub at the center. So the advantages as compared to bus topology, it gives a far much better performance signal. Uh, don't necessarily get transmitted to all the workstation. A send signal reaches the intended destination after passing through no more than three to four devices and two to three links. Then performance of the network is dependent on the capacity of the central hub, easy to connect uh, new nodes. Without affecting rest of uh, the network. Then similarly, components uh, can also be removed easily. Centralized management, it helps in monitoring the network. Failure of one node or link uh, doesn't affect the rest of the uh, network. Then at this time, it's easy to detect the failure and troubleshoot it. Uh, advantage too much dependence on central device has its own drawbacks. If it fails, whole network goes down. So those are the challenges. Then uh, mesh topology. We have a topology called mesh. Another type is mesh. The, uh, this is the most common type of topology used in the wide area network, where there are many paths uh, between different locations. Each computer is connected to each other, resulting in it being robust, but uses, user, uses are a lot of cabling, uses a lot of cabling, and the interconnection increases rapidly with increase so a network uh, setup where each computer and the network device is interconnected with one another allowing for most transmission to be distributed even if one of the connections go down so the topology is not commonly used for most computer network as difficult and expensive to have redundant connection to each computer however this topology is commonly used for for wireless networks. So you can see the star where each computer is interconnected and you can see the topology, that's what we call the mesh topology. And you can see it very clearly. So data can be transmitted from different devices simultaneously. Uh, this topology can withstand high traffic. Even if one of the components fails, there is always an alternative present. present. So data transfer doesn't get affected. Expansion and modification in topology can be done without disrupting other nodes. Then there are high chances of redundancy in many of the network connections. Overall uh, cost of this network is way too high as compared to other network topologies. Setup and maintenance of this topology is very difficult, even administration of the topology stuff. Then we have another one called the tree topology. Another topology that we, we will appreciate uh, visiting in our discussion is the tree topology. Alternatively, referred to the topology or hierarchical tree topology is one of the most common 
uh, network setups that uh, are similar to a bus topology and a star topology. A tree topology connects one star network to other star networks. Below is a visual example of a, net a tree topology with a simple computer setup on a network using the, using the star topology connects to another network using the star topology. And you can see it is here. So this is what we call the, and it's connecting to another. So it's an extension of the star and bus topology. So in uh, in networks where there are topologies can be individually for reasons related to scalability, tree is uh, the best alternative. Expansion of network is simple, is, is possible and easy. The whole network into uh, the whole network into segments. That is the star network, which can easily manage and maintain. Then error detection and uh, correct, uh, correction is easy. Then each segment is uh, provided with dedicated point-to-point -point wiring to the central hub. If one segment is uh, damaged, other segments are not affected. Then disadvantages of the tree topology, because of its basic, uh, basic uh, uh, structure, tree topology relies heavily on the uh, main bus cable. If it breaks, the whole network is crippled as, uh, as more and more nodes and uh, segments are added, maintenance becomes difficult. Then scalability of the network depends on the type of cable. Then we have what we call the hybrid. Hybrid uh, networks use a combination of any two or more topologies in such a way that the resulting network does not exhibit one of the standard topologies, e.g. bus, star, ring, etc. Hybrid topology is always produced when two different bus network topologies are connected. Two common examples for hybrid networks are the star slash ring network and the star bus network. So a star slash ring network consists of two or more star topologies connected using a multi-station access unit as a centralized hub. A star bus network consists of two or more star topologies connected using a bus trunk. So the bus trunk serves as the network backbone. And you can see there, that's the diagram. So the advantages, it is reliable. You can, it's also scalable, it's flexible, and, and it is effective. So those are the advantages. The disadvantages, the complexity, the complexity of the design. One of the biggest drawbacks of hybrid topology is in its design. It's not easy to design this type of architecture and it's uh, a tough job for designers. Configuration and installation process needs to be very effic efficient. The costly hub, the hub used to connect two distinct networks are very expensive. These hubs are different from usual hubs as they need to be intelligent enough to work with different architectures and uh, should, should be function, should uh, function even if uh, a part of network is down. Then costly infrastructure, a hybrid architecture are usually large in, in scale. Uh, they require a lot of cable cooling systems and sophisticated networks and uh, sophisticated network devices etc so in this topic you've learned what data communication is we went ahead to discuss data communication model as well as uh, uh, transmission media after the discussion we went ahead to explore networks as well as uh, classify the networks according to the physical arrangement of computers Mm, and in, in topic six, we will, now in the next topic, which is topic six, and which is our last topic, uh, we will now be going mathematical, uh, which will discuss data representation. This is the, the way the data we, in, in, we put into the computer is represented. We also look at how you can easily convert data from one system to another. But before you go to topic six, let us now see. You have understood. So you can you try these questions 
and uh, be able to see they are part of the notes and uh, that one can really help you to see if you're in the right track or not. So you look at those questions and uh, that marks the end of this topic. So the last topic we are going to, talk, to look at is uh, data representation, which is our last topic in this course. And mostly maybe we are going to that, but mostly it will be mathematics. So be keen, don't miss the lessons. Those who miss the cuts, Paul Sana, we have a cut two. So there will be no, no repeat for cuts. Once you miss, you missed and uh, just count yourself, you scored a zero and we move on. So uh, that is normal with life. When you don't do a cut the right time, next time uh, you sub up. If you miss all of them, then you'll get a zero and uh, that's life also. So make sure you also do the assignments. I'm going to add these notes in, in just in the next 20 minutes. I think the notes will be online. You can access. I'm also going to add in questions for this topic. Uh, if looking at this, this could be topic number. Um, this could be week. Is it week eight, week eight, or week nine? So having said that, uh, you have a good week, and uh, that is it for this week. Enjoy your week. And then let us meet next in calculations. Mostly it will be calculations. Uh, we'll look about. We'll look at what we're presenting. Then from there, uh, we, we we have uh, we have uh, we have some calculations. So don't worry. All will be well. Have a good day. And that is all. Uh, unfortunately, we had a problem today. Uh, not able to. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, my my computer initiated automatic updates and I was able to I delayed it to enter the class. I'm really sorry for that, but uh, let's continue. Have a good day. Bye.